In this problem, we're computing the Maclaurin series for the natural log of 1 plus x. So it's a power series centered at 0. And just to remind you of what a Maclaurin series looks like, the proposal here is that we can expand any function as a polynomial expansion possibly containing infinitely many terms. Written in series notation, I recognize that as a power series centered at 0. And as it turned out, and I'll post a link to the derivation real quick, the CNs are given by finding the nth derivative of the function we're expanding, evaluated at 0, all divided by n factorial. So I'm just going to make a list of all these successive derivatives of natural log 1 plus x, starting with just the function itself. The first derivative is just 1 over 1 plus x. To find the second derivative, I just view that as 1 plus x to the negative 1 power and use the power rule. So I get negative 1 plus x to the negative 2, which is negative 1 over 1 plus x quantity squared. Third derivative, I use the same idea. I view this as negative 1 plus x to the negative 2. Bring down the exponent and it gives me a positive 2 over 1 plus x the third power. In this term I left the 3 and the 2 separate because I'm trying to recognize a pattern and in my fifth derivative I end up with a positive 2 times 3 times 4 all divided by 1 plus x to the fifth. So that's probably enough to recognize any pattern that emerges here. When I compute f of 0 I end up with a natural log of 1 which is 0. When I compute f prime of 0, I end up with a 1. When I compute f double prime of 0, I end up with a negative 1. f triple prime of 0. Things get a little more interesting. Now I have a 2. Fourth derivative evaluated at 0. Now I have a negative 2 times 3. Fifth derivative evaluated at 0. Now I have a 2 times 3 times 4. Then we plug into our formula for the c's. So c0 is 0. c1 is 1 over 1 factorial, which is just 1. c2 is negative 1 over 2 factorial, or negative 1 half. c3 is 2 over 3 factorial c4 is negative 2 times 3 over 4 factorial and c5 is 2 times 3 times 4 over 5 factorial. So I notice an interesting pattern here. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 and the 4, 3, and 2 cancel out leaving me with just 1 fifth. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 and the 3 and 2 cancel out leaving me with negative 1 fourth. I'll just work my way back here. 3 factorial is 3 times 2, and the 2's cancel, leaving me with 1 third. The term prior to that is negative 1 half. I'll just rewrite C1 to follow the pattern, and then C0, of course, vanished. So now I can see the pattern. I have 1, negative 1 half, positive 3rd, negative 1 fourth, positive 1 fifth, negative 1 sixth, and so on and so on. So we arrive at the infinite series representation of natural log 1 plus x, and it's x minus x squared over 2. So I'm just plugging my cn's into my original proposal here, plus x cubed over 3, minus x to the 4th over 4, plus x to the 5th over 5, and so on and so on. Written in series notation, it looks like this. We're starting from the n equals 1 term. And I want to start out with a positive number, so I'm going to put a negative 1 to the n plus 1 in here. So when I plug in n equals 1, I get negative 1 squared, so I'm starting positive. And then x to the n over n. Next, we're asked to find the interval of convergence for this, and so we apply the ratio test. The absolute value bars are going to kill the negative 1 part, so I'm not concerned with that. And I write down my n plus 1 term. I divide by the nth 
term, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm going to cancel out n factors of x. And this leaves me with a single x in the numerator and an n. In the denominator, I have an n plus 1. Now, the x is a constant with respect to the n limit. So I can pull that absolute value of x out in front. The n's are positive, so I drop the absolute value bars. And in this limit, the largest power of n will dominate in the numerator and denominator, meaning this 1 down here is a negligible correction. So I have the limit of n over n, which is 1, and I end up with just absolute value of x for this. And this series converges provided that that ratio test limit comes out to something less than 1. In other words, it converges on negative 1 to 1, but we still have to test the endpoints to see if the series converges there. So I need to plug in negative 1 and then take a look at that infinite series and then use whatever tools I can to test the convergence. Okay, when I plug in here, I get negative 1 to the n where the x to the n was, and I can combine these two terms in the numerator. And they give me negative 1 to the 2n plus 1. But 2n plus 1 is always an odd number, so that's always negative 1 up there. And I can just factor that out. And I recognize I'm looking at the, the divergent harmonic series. In other words, this sum piece goes to infinity. With a minus sign out in front, that means it goes to negative infinity. But that shouldn't surprise us because we just plugged in x equals negative 1 into the expansion for natural log 1 plus x. In other words, we just tried to evaluate the natural log of 0. So this diverges to negative infinity. When I plug in x equals positive 1, I get the sum as x goes from 1 to infinity negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. And this is just the alternating harmonic series, so I know it converges. We've proved that in the past using the alternating series test. The final question here has something to do with the natural log of 2. And again, that just comes from thinking about what we just plugged into this series. I just plugged in x equals 1. That means the series that I was evaluating was the natural log of 1 plus 1 or the natural log of 2. So that's kind of a cool fact. We've been working with the alternating harmonic series for a long time, and we found out that it's one of the rare series that you can actually explicitly sum up, and it happens to add up to the natural log of 2.